Good day, friends, brothers and sisters. My name is Ryan Morales from Michigan, USA, and welcome to Pathways of Hope. Today, we celebrate the Feast of the Assumption. This is when Mary, being free from original sin through her immaculate conception and from actual sin through the grace of God, was taken, body and soul, into heaven. This is an important reality in our Catholic faith. As such, our reading for today is a story of Mary. This is taken from the Gospel of Luke, and it's a story of the visitation where Mary went to her cousin Elizabeth. Let me read the passage. In those days, Mary arose and went with haste into the hill country, to the town of in Judah, and she entered the house of Zechariah and greeted Elizabeth. And when Elizabeth heard the, the greeting of Mary, the baby leapt in her womb. And Mary, filled with the Holy Spirit, exclaimed with loud cry, Blessed are you among women, and blessed is the fruit of your womb. And why is this granted to me, that the mother of my Lord should come to me? For behold, when the sound of your greeting came to my ears, the baby in my womb leapt for joy. And blessed is she who believed that there would be a fulfillment of what was spoken to her from the Lord. And Mary said, My soul magnifies the Lord, and my spirit rejoices in God my Savior. For he has regarded the humble estate of his servant. For behold, from now on, all generations will call me blessed. For he who is mighty has done great things for me, and holy is his name. His mercy is on those who fear him from generation to generation. He has shown strength with his arm. He has scattered the proud in the imagination of their hearts. He has brought down the mighty from their thrones and exalted those of humble estate. He has filled the hung hungry with good things, and the rich he has sent empty away. He has helped his servant Israel in remembrance of his mercy, as he spoke to our fathers to Abraham and to his offspring forever. And Mary remained with her about three months and returned to her home. Now, one thing which you might find curious about, about this is the fact that it seems at first glance that this has nothing to do with the Assumption. This passage took place even before Jesus was born. What does this have to do with the feast that we celebrate today? For us to understand this, we have to look at the whole Bible. In particular, the last book of the Bible in Revelation chapters 11 and 12, where it says that the Ark of the Covenant was seen in God's temple in heaven. And then immediately after this, we see a woman in heaven clothed with a sudden moon. The book seems to liken this woman, which we understand as Mary, to the Ark of the Covenant, the most important object in ancient Israel, since it was, for the Jews, God's physical presence here on earth. This is emphasized by the fact that Luke was writing the, stor the story of the visitation parallel to the time David greeted the Ark of the Covenant when it came to him in the second in Second Samuel chapter 6. In this story, the Ark traveled to David in the hill country of Judea just as Mary traveled to Elizabeth in the hill country of Judea. David jumped and danced for joy upon meeting the ark, just as John the Baptist slept in Elizabeth's womb. David said, How can the ark of the Lord come to me? As Elizabeth said, How can the mother of my Lord come to me? And the ark stayed three months, as Mary stayed with Elizabeth for three months. Now, this is important, not merely because of symbolism. We see something here. As the Ark of the Covenant brought God to the Israelites, Mary brings Jesus to us. She is God's chosen vessel to bring Jesus to the world. In the same way, and equally important, she brings Jesus to us. Her assumption is a glimpse of what we will experience once Jesus comes again, when we will finally be cleansed from all our sin 
through the body of Christ. And when we will experience not the shedding behind of our body, but its glorification, she gives us a picture of what is promised. Now you can say that's all in the future. What good does this do to me now? Well, Mary brings Jesus to us and she leads us to Jesus. Whenever we pray to her, we bring our intercession to, she brings her intercession to Jesus. The Magnificat, the prayer mentioned in the second part of this passage, clearly shows us this, where she regards herself as a lowly servant and rightly focuses our attention on God. So today, ask for her intercession. When you struggle, ask for the Holy Mother's prayer. And above all, ask the Lord for the grace to be able to avoid sin, just as he gave her the grace to do so. In doing this, we, like her, not only become closer to God, but we are also able to we are also more able to share Christ to others. Mary teaches us how to bring others to Christ. If you have been blessed by this reflection, please like and share Pathways of Hope to your friends and family. Once again, I am Ryan Morales. Have a great day and may God bless you.